Hello everyone and welcome back to Danganronpa Trigger Happy Havoc. So in the last episode, we actually found out our next victim was Chihiro. So now we are going to do the class trial to see who done it, as Monokuma would say. So let's go and head right back into the Deadly School Life game with Makoto Naegi. Okay, that was not my Makoto voice, but you know what? Let's go. Time to go kill someone else now. I'm gonna move my drink over here. Ahem. So is everyone ready to... What? Hmm? Am I blind or are we missing someone? Yo. Yeah, Toko's not here. Huh? And Toko is... You really don't remember? Come on. Kidding, I'm kidding. How could I forget that little nut job? She's a crucial part of the class trial this time. What are you gonna Okey do? Okie dokie, I'll go ahead and drag her out here kicking and screaming. Just one moment, please. And just like he said, a few minutes later, he reappeared, dragging Toko behind him. I I told him I don't want to go, but he forced me. I can't believe you would drag a girl around. Yeah. Terrible. You're terrible. Phew. So now everyone's here, right? Okay, then hustle on to the elevator and let's get this show on the road. <laughs> I'll see you guys down there. Let's go. So, shall we get going? It's time we find out who killed Chihiro. Chihiro? Chihiro Fujisaki. She is so gentle, so calm and meek. Nobody had any problems with her. Someone made the choice to kill a girl like that? And that murderer is one of us. Someone standing right here. Uh, elevator? Mondo, get out of the way! Okay, we have no choice, right? We have to do this? It's true. Yes. I give a small nod in reply. With one last deep breath, I walk into the elevator with shaky legs. Each step forward, I could feel my heart starting to race faster and faster. As soon as everyone was on, the elevator began to descend. I couldn't get a handle on my emotions. Couldn't stop speculating. The steel box sank with heavy clunking sounds deeper and deeper into the ground. And as we went deeper, the uneasiness in my heart grew bigger and bigger. The elevator was unaffected, however, and continued to descend without hesitation. Until finally... It came to a sudden stop. Okay, I promise this time I will do better about the last part where it's like click, 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 click. I promise. I have trained. I will do better. <laughs> what do you think? I redecorated. Isn't it so fresh? Isn't it so exciting? Hmm. Don't waste our time with stupid questions. Let's get this over with. Very good, nice. good. You're rip roaring to go. Gotta say, I don't hate it. Not at all. Well? Okay, then let's get the show on the road! Thrills, chills, kills. Everyone, please find your assigned seats. Okay, it's time. And so, the curtain opened once again. A deadly judgment. Bro, are we really gonna do this deadly crap again? A deadly judgment. A deadly deception. A deadly betrayal. A deadly riddle. A deadly defense. A deadly fate. A deadly class trial. Makoto, you need to, um, chill with the deadly crap. Yeah, save, sure. What? I don't need to do this. I don't need this. I don't need this. I don't need this. What are we doing? I don't need that. I'm good. Let's go. I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. So, your votes will determine the results. If you can figure out who done it, then only they will receive punishment. But, if you pick the wrong one, then I'll punish everyone besides the Blackened, and the one that deceived everyone else will graduate. Yay. Okay, then. So, first off, let's talk about the murder weapon. First, we have to make clear what was used to deliver the fateful blow. Or the fatal, not fateful. <laughs> I just realized that. Make your argument. Okay. Yes, obviously the dumbbell. Chihiro's fatal injury. It appears it was a head wound. That's true. According to the Monokuma file, the killer used a blunt instrument. But what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? It was... Uh, what? It was that! <laughs> no, I'm saying that I'm adding on to it. Chihiro's oh my god. Fatal injury. This is starting bad already. <laughs> it appears it was a head wound. Yes. 
According to the Monokuma file, the killer used a blunt instrument. But what kind of blunt instrument? I'm, I'm could trying it have to been? tell you, it's the dumbbell. I bet it was an iron No, oh, shut up. You're so dumb. Should have listened. No, I should really listen to the full thing before I start. <laughs> Can we agree that the object that dealt the fatal blow was the dumbbell found at the scene of the crime? It was covered in blood. And there was nothing else at the scene that could have caused that kind of injury. And the wound on the victim's head is consistent with the shape of the dumbbell. As far as I'm concerned, there's no mistake and no room for doubt on this one. You looked at her head wound? You gotta, Owie. Shut up. Yes! That's so creepy! Yo, we are literally in a killing game. If you don't mind, I will proceed from here. Let's move on to discussion of the culprit. Although... I believe the criminal behind this heinous act is already quite clear. What? For real? Chihiro's killer is the fiendish serial killer, Genocide Jack. Genocide Jack, fiendish serial killer. Did he really kill Chihiro? A new element has been added. Um, sure. White noise? Okay, press the right, left, right, okay. Oh, okay, 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 we're good, okay, let me do it. Okay, white noise, what is that? Genocide Jack file case. Yeah, it's not perfect. The culprit is Genocide Jack. Oh! I'm sure of it. Case closed, as far as I'm concerned. I got you. But that's impossible. Why? What makes it impossible? Well, I mean, come on. There's just no proof for it. Hey, so speaking of what? genocide, Jack. Do I need to slow I don't it know down? Who that is. Did I need to slow it down? Oh my god. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. What Biakia showed us. There is, there the is proof. Is genocide, Jack? Yeah, seriously. I'm sure of it. Case yeah. closed, as far as I'm concerned. Okay, I need to slow but it down. That's impossible. Why? What makes it impossible? Well, I mean. Come on! There's just no proof. There's for proof. It. Yeah, yeah. No, that's wrong. No, that's wrong. Break. I might know one reason he could be involved. What? I found this file while I was looking around the archive in the library. I guess it's some kind of confidential file the police put together about the genocide Jack case. What? That's kind of weird as shit, isn't it? What was something like that doing in the library? The why of it is probably more trouble than it's worth. So let's forget about that for now. That's more suspicious. More importantly, it outlines all the specifics of every Genocide Jack case in exceeding detail. According to the file, there appear to be two defining characteristics in every Genocide Jack case. The first is that a bloody message is found written at the scene of every murder. Oh, that's right. Boob lust. Boob lust? Uh, no. It's actually blood lust. But more important is the other characteristic. And it's something that has never been made public. Never made public? What the hell is it? Why don't you tell them, Makoto? Of course. The other characteristic of every Genocide Jack case, which the world at large doesn't know, if I'm not mistaken, it has to do with the positioning of the body. Um, yeah. You literally it. just told me that. Apparently. <laughs> In every Genocide Jack case, the killer suspends the body in a certain way. Other than the killer, the only people who know about this are the higher-ups in the police department. However, Chihiro was most definitely suspended in the same way. So, how did the culprit know about this when only high-level police officials were aware of it? There's only one logical answer I can think of. It's because the culprit in this case is the real Genocide Jack. No fucking way! You're saying Genocide Jack is one of us? Yes. In fact, it's Toko. Bang! What? Genocide Jack's true identity is Toko Fukawa. You lie! You just gonna rat her out? What? Hey, okay, wait, hold on a sec. Toko has like, bloodophobia or bloodophobia. What kind of serial killer is afraid of blood? Is Toko Genocide Jack? The answer is yes and no. Another oh, like with the thing with her tongue? Man, 
Why is this gonna be so complicated? You know, like when she fainted, she was like, <laughs> It's a riddle for sure, but I feel like I understand it. What it means for Genocide Jack to be Toko, but also to not be Toko, the answer is that she's simply not one person, but multiple people, right? Yeah, spin that round, spin it around. Oh, Hangman's Gambit? Okay. What? What is this? What? I don't know what this one is. I need some help here. I need some help here. S SP split? No? Sp sh what? What? What is it? What? Sh 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 what? <laughs> what is this word? S C H S C H I Schizo? What? <laughs> Schizo? I'm almost dead here. Can you give me an O? Please? There it is. Oh. Schizo? Now I understand. That's what? <laughs> To say, like, is it because what? Genocide Jack has a split personality? That was a weird way to say that. Huh? I think I read that somewhere in the file, too. They thought that the suspect might have... What did they call it? DID. Dissociative Identity Disorder. Oh, okay. But still, to go and say that about Ms. Fukawa is... Perfectly acceptable. Toko's strange behavior after seeing the body is proof enough that she has a split personality. The one thing Toko could have- The one thing that shows Toko could have a split personality to do with her behavior is... Um... It's both of these. Her behavior changed. I yeah. You're talking I have about one heart. how she started acting totally different than usual, right? That's right. Think back. She fainted when she saw Chihiro's corpse, and then, when she woke up... I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> What was that, a dead body? Hey, are you dead? <laughs> she must have hit her head real hard when she fainted. The world has a front and a back, a top lining and a bottom. I see a truth and a web of lies. Yes, this is quite concerning. I mean, she sounds completely different. She was acting funny, that's for sure. That melancholy tone of hers completely disappeared. Don't go assigning adjectives to my tone without permission. Not to mention, once she regained consciousness and saw Chihiro's body again, she was utterly calm. In other words, within her is one personality that can't handle blood, and one that obviously can. <laughs> so when Toko trapped herself in her room, it's because she was scared of Genocide Jack? Mm-hmm. I won't let Genocide Jack have control. I'll drive out the killer, drive out the murderous fiend. The reason she locked herself in her room wasn't to keep other people from getting in. It was to keep her other personality from getting out. What? Toko was afraid. Afraid of the murderous fiend inside of her. Of killing even more people. <gasps> How? Yeah. How can you know all this? I do believe you misunderstood her. What she's trying to say isn't, how can you know all this? No. What she wants to know is, how could you tell them? Huh? Last night, just before Monokuma gave his motive speech, Toko and I had a strange conversation. She told me a most interesting story. She said, a murderous fiend lived within her, and she was afraid it could appear and attack at any time. And that trepidation is what's caused her to have such a bleak attitude. Isn't that right, Toko? <laughs> this is all a lie. Right, Toko? You said you wouldn't tell anyone. What? You promised? I can't believe you lied! 
You have only yourself to blame. You came to me with your tragic little story. I didn't ask you to. This is the real world, not some romantic fantasy fairy tale. <laughs> Besides, you broke your promise first. You said that as long as you were here, no matter what, you wouldn't let Genocide Jack kill anyone. But in spite of that promise, I'm sorry, I couldn't keep our promise. But don't worry, never again. I won't let Genocide Jack ever have control again. You said if I kept my promise, you would go out with me. Girl, you have bad choices. That's the only reason I promised. How many times do I have to tell you? I never said that, but you weren't able to do it. You just couldn't resist that rush you got from killing, could you? I, I tried. I swear I tried to control it. But, but... but your efforts were useless. What a disappointment. I hate you. Well, the opening act is nearly finished. All that's left is to hear from the person in question directly. The person? Y you don't... Toko's body suddenly lunged backwards. A huge thud echoed across the courtroom, but in the next second... Oh my god, that tongue! Hello there! Is it me you were hoping to see? Oh my god! What the heck? Her eyes are even red. So you figured it out, huh? Well, whatever. What are you gonna do? I'm the ultimate murderous fiend, Genocide Jack! Or better yet, let's go with Genocide Jill! What the fuck is this? Toko, what happened to you? Not Toko, that's a loser name. And what happened is a textbook split personality. So what if one of them happens to be a serial killer? You should turn a blind eye to one's faults. Go put that tongue back in your mouth. <laughs> oh my god, it got worse. <laughs> so intense. Like they say, sound and murder is mine, sound and murder is body. This one is so different from the one we've come to know. Yes, well, the world is composed of a front and a back, you know. Just like how every inning has a top and a bottom. That? Or how in the depths of every truth lives a little lie. Behind every dark and gloomy soul lives another that shines as bright as the sun! <laughs> oh my god, that laugh is crazy! This is the murderous fiend inside Jack? This is... This is... This is beyond insane! Um, Miss Jack, uh, uh, Jill, can I ask you a question? What's up? Some of us think you might be the mastermind behind our entire situation. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'll tell you! I am the mastermind of all masterminds! Just kidding! Then, it's not true? Of course it's not true! How dare you try to link me to that creepazoid! creepazoid. And another thing! The government and society in the outside world are totally powerless. I mean, they just let this idiotic bloodthirsty maniac go buck wild all over town. Sure, I'm a bloodthirsty maniac, but life is pain, right? To live is to hurt other people. It's a necessary evil if you want to survive. The act of living itself causes pain for everyone. Just kidding again. <laughs> oh my god. This should be enough to convince you. This murderous fiend is responsible for Chihiro's death. There's clearly a motive, so there should be no doubt. A motive? Remember what Monokuma told us? If someone didn't murder and graduate within 24 hours, an embarrassing memory or secret would be revealed. Well, let's assume that Toko's secret was about Genocide Jack. If a secret like that came to light, Toko's life would have undoubtedly been forever ruined. So she had a very clear motive to never have that side of herself exposed. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. But sorry, as much as I hate to admit it, I'm not the culprit. Oh. But I cannot imagine anyone other than you could murder someone in such a bizarre fashion. Maybe so, maybe so, but nevertheless, it's the truth. Do you really expect any of us to believe you? Yeah. I could never believe a word you say, you monster! That's kinda mean. She just killed a few people. Like, don't be calling her a monster, you know? Maybe... Maybe she's totally right about that, but... But... Something's still bothering me. It's the scissors! It's the scissors! What she said. 
I need to get some more details about all of this. It's the scissors, Makoto! It's the scissors! The scissors that weren't there! Okay, status of dead body. Sorry, but I didn't kill anyone! You say that, but do you really expect any of us to believe it? Perhaps if you had an alibi, that would change things. Oh, an alibi, huh? Now we're talking! When you compare your past murders to this incident, the modus operandi matches complete. Nope, there's no scissors. No scissors. Are the methods of murder really exactly the same? I'm not so sure about that. I think there's a slight difference between the genocide jack cases and this one. Huh? How's it any different? Uh-oh, you don't know? Well then, human garbage, let me tell you! Crazy. Yeah, the scissors. I murder with in everyone. passion and conviction. I consider myself a professional, and I have a very particular way of doing things. Imagine you go to a fancy Italian restaurant. They're very picky about the noodles, the sauce, everything. But what happened to Chihiro? It'd be like if that same Italian restaurant started using ragu or Chef Boyardee. This is no creation of mine. Mm -hmm. Let me rephrase that in a way that maybe makes more sense. There are two clear differences between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. The one clear difference between the murders. The photos of the Genocide Jack case, look at the neck and stomach, we'll see a difference. Uh, fatal injury? I got it! For one, the cause of death is different. With scissors. In the Genocide Jack murders, all the victims were killed the same way. According to the case file, they were all apparently killed with a pair of scissors. But Chihiro died from a blow to the head, right? Ah, yes. That is remarkably different from the other murders. Wouldn't it be strange for someone who kills the same way without fail to suddenly change their method? And there's more. One more conflicting detail. That's right! In my recipe of murder, if the bloody message is the tortellini, then the arrangement of the body would be the pesto Oh sauce. my god, she's crazy. Could you please stop comparing killing people to cooking? So, are you saying the other difference has to do with how the body was arranged? That's right, the second difference is related to how she was suspended. In the photos of Genocide Jack cases, all the other victims were stabbed in their hands. See a difference. Um... I got it. Yeah, 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 I got it. Do you I knew that. remember what the killer used to suspend her? They used some yeah, kind of okay. rope to hang her up by her wrists. What is your point? Well, in all the previous Genocide Jack cases, something else was used to suspend them. The scissors? Yeah, scissors. Specifically, pairs of razor-sharp scissors. And guess what? I use my own specially designed scissors for the murders and the arrangement. Like I said, I'm a professional, so naturally I'm very picky about the tools I use. And, 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 and you know what else? Big Mac said there's two differences, but he's wrong. Oh yeah, Chihiro's a girl. Big Mac? Are Big Mac? Are you referring to me? Listen up, Big Mac. There's actually one more difference. Huh? My word, you really didn't notice? Take a look at who the victims were in each Genocide Jack case. There's a pattern there just waiting to be discovered. A pattern? Figure that out, and it'll be plain as death why I couldn't have possibly killed that little lolly girl. Let's see. There was a pattern surrounding the Genocide Jack victims and Chihiro didn't fit. If you look at the names of every victim, what you'll notice is... I think I figured it out. Chihiro was a girl. Is it because... Chihiro was a girl? Bingo! Bullseye! Right on the money! What are you talking about? In all the Genocide Jack cases, all the victims had something in common. Ken Haradara, uh, Tetsu... Tetsuhiro, Shoji, Kano, Takashi... Yeah, they're all guys. They were all... guys? That's right! The people I kill with such passion and conviction are all adorable little... Oh my god. I can't believe I said it! I'm so embarrassed! Embarrassed! <laughs> what is wrong with you? I can't help it! I'm just a full throttle boy on boy girl. fan girl! Girl! The side of me just hates it! Oh my god. But now I'm on the fast track to becoming a full fledged fan madam! 
So since Chihiro was a girl and not an adorable little man, you wouldn't kill her? Would an Italian chef suddenly start oh making ramen just because they're both noodles? Don't be stupid. She got a point with all these food things. I have too much passion and conviction to cross that line. That's the absolute reality of a one and only. We get it. You've clearly explained your hobby and your philosophy. But that's not all there is to it. It's a different matter entirely. When you're forced to kill in order to survive. Quiet, lowly cur! Lowly cur? I would never kill for a reason as petty as mere survival. And if by some fluke I did kill to survive, why would I bother with the message and arrangement? It'd make me the obvious suspect! That does make some amount of sense. Plus, whatever reason I have for killing, I would never leave out my prized scissors. Who would go out of their way to use a big, stupid, heavy dumbbell? Maybe you used the dumbbell because you couldn't find any scissors in the school? Any scissors? I don't just use any scissors. I only use my own set of high-class envy of the entire world scissors. OK, whatever. There still aren't any in the school. Are you sure about that? Oh, God. Oh, my God. She's so crazy. She's fully equipped. That's right. So I can kill anywhere, anytime. Why would I resort to dumbbells or rope when I have my trusty scissors by my side? Where'd she pull those out from? Oh, man, tell me I'm wrong. You can't, can you? Gutter dogs, all of you. Not to mention, I have no clue how to tie a good knot. <laughs> so rope's totally out of the question anyway. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on anymore. Could such a heinous villain really be innocent? But the body really was suspended, right? And nobody but the police knew about that. Yeah. That's why we figured it had to be the real deal and not some copycat killer or whatever. There actually is one person. One person who... Oh, it's... It's Byakuya. Yeah, it's it's Byakuya because he read all those, um... The files. Where... Yeah, yeah you read the files in the, the archive room. Byakuya, it's possible you could have found out, isn't it? You'd have no problem gaining access to classified government documents or internal police records. Plus, you'd already looked through the Genocide Jack file before this all happened, hadn't you? Are you saying Mr. Togami did it? Then but the why? reason he pushed the theory of Genocide Jack being the killer so hard was because he wanted to pin the crime on her. So, he rearranged the scene to disguise it and make it look like I put my stamp on it. The adorable glasses man was behind it all? Oh, I'm on fire! Well, Byakuya, what's your response? I see. So now the suspicion falls on me. Are you smiling? Then I must ask, when would you say I began acting suspicious? Surely you must have an answer. Hmm. Looking back and thinking about it now, the way you were acting right before we discovered the body was a little strange. And the locker rooms. They're suspicious. Very suspicious indeed. Wouldn't you agree? Suspicious? It seems nobody searched the locker rooms. Let's start with the girls' locker room. You wanted to go to the girls' locker room right away, right? But since you're a guy... I should have naturally thought of the boys' locker room first. Is that what you want to say? The victim was Chihiro, a girl. Hence why I said we should check the girls' locker room. Nothing strange about that, I'd say. On the contrary, there's something very strange. Okay, then. What's so strange about it? Go ahead. Share with the rest of the class. There's a clear contradiction in what Byakuya just said. I don't even know what it is. Uh, sure. Truth flashback. A weak spot and hold down the left mouse button. Then you'll memorize that weak spot. The memorized phrase can only be shot once as a single truth bullet. I don't know what this wants me to do. Okay, so I need to get something. Okay, I'm gonna listen to it first. So, Wait, you said what is the Monokuma file to? Um, 
The victim was Chihiro Fujisaki. The time of death was estimated to be around 2 a.m. The body was discovered in the girls' locker room on the second floor. The cause of death was a blow. Can I? Was a blow to the head with a blunt object. She was killed instantly. Okay. Before we found the body? Why are you not but speaking? He was acting weird. How? If you're presented with the opportunity to check out the girls' locker room, you absolutely take it! That's a natural reaction for any guy! The victim was Chihiro, yeah. who was a girl. So, of course, I would suggest we check the girls' locker room first. There was no time for pointless distractions. What's so strange about that? I wish you'd take me with you. Oh my god, Mumi. Shut up. <laughs> okay. Okay, so it's the first one? So, you said Byakuya was acting kind of weird before we found the body. Right? But he was acting weird... how? This is it? If you're presented with the opportunity to check out the girls' locker room, you absolutely take it! That's a natural reaction for any guy! The victim was Chihiro. Right? Okay, I don't understand how that one works. I don't understand that one, but I got it. <laughs> I'll tell you what's so strange about that. Yeah, please, Makoto, because I don't even know. Because up until we actually discovered the body, oh. we couldn't have known who the victim was. <laughs> oh. So your claim that you went to the girls' locker room first because Chihiro was the victim doesn't hold up. I see. That's a good answer, I must admit. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. But your reasoning is still too weak. Huh? What's wrong? Is that it? Surely you've got more than that. Go ahead. Show us. With the Akio's attitude. It's like he doesn't even care. I've got him cornered, but he's acting like he has nothing to do with him. What's the matter? You're not finished already, are you? There must be more to it. Well, yeah. There is. I think. There is more to it. Think about it. We just talked about the differences between this case and past Genocide Jack incidents. The proof you're looking for is hidden in there. Oh? Proof that I'm the culprit, you mean? I mean, maybe. You're acting sus. The differences... Evidence proves Bak Yakia is responsible is hidden in there? What could it be? It's a good question. I'm trying my best to get stuff right. Like, oh... The difference between the cases? You want me to explain it again? Yeah. <laughs> when I want to kill, I use my very own special uh -huh. scissors. And I use those same scissors to arrange the body. But Chihiro was suspended with... It was some kind of rope. Was it not? That's right! It absolutely was! Then there must be something very fishy indeed about that rope. Uh-huh. Hey, Byakuya, where'd you get it from, huh? I'd never seen that rope Oh, okay, I gotcha. No, it was from the desk lamp. Actually, I'm pretty sure you have seen it before. Because, you see, that rope, or should I say, that extension cord? Oh! An extension cord? Byakuya. You've used the extension cord in the library more than once, haven't you? And the same extension cord that was in the library all this time went missing after the murder. Mm. And there's no way someone who uses that extension cord as much as you do wouldn't discover that fact. And Byakuya must be the one who took the extension cord. I can't imagine any other possibility. That's really what you think? Then your conclusion is something like this. I killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, then hung her up and wrote that bloody message. I intentionally made it look like Genocide Jack was behind it. Is that about right? He's doing it again. He's totally calm, totally unconcerned. As if he's not even involved. Wait, not even involved? What's wrong? I asked you if you think that's what happened. Hell yes, that's what happened. So that's it, right? Byaki is the killer. I don't disagree with not disagreeing. He kept calling this a game, right? So he'd be totally willing to do something like this to win. Um, sorry, but could we hold on just a second? I... I think we need to talk about this a little more. Huh? Do we really need to? 
We've already decided who did it. Why is everyone always like that? They're always like, we don't need to talk about it. You, your life is literally in the balance. Like, it's a killing game. Of course, know, you should talk about it. But still, there's something that's still bothering me. Is that right? And what, pray tell, is still bothering you? I killed her in the You're girls' locker me. room, then disguised my crime. Specifically, I dressed it up to make it look like it was the work of a homicidal psychopath. What about all that bothers you? Wait, what was that just now? Something's not right. Chihiro's body was definitely found in the girls' locker room, but does that mean... Can I really accept what Byakuya said is the truth? No, I don't think so. There's something... Definitely, there's definitely something off about what he said. Scene of the crime? I got it! You say you killed Chihiro in the girl's locker room, right? Oh, yeah, because everything was, like, switched. Like, Sakura's, uh, protein coffee. But are you sure about that? Isn't it possible that the murder took place somewhere else? How disappointing. What kind of question is that? Even in the world of disappointments, this is a true letdown. She was found dead in the girls' locker room. There is absolutely no question about that. How could the scene of the crime have been anywhere else? Well, I think it's entirely possible that she was killed somewhere else, then carried there later, along with the rest of the murder scene. The rest of the murder scene? That was awfully specific. Please tell me you have a reason for saying all of that. I believe I do. Hey, Byakuya, did you just... Did I just take you off guard? When the story suddenly moved to the crime scene, Byakuya, who'd been so confident up till now, maybe Byakuya never realized that the actual scene of the crime could have been somewhere else. Hey! Don't just move on without permission! What do you mean she was killed somewhere else? Come on, Makoto. If there's any chance the murder took place somewhere else, Let's see the proof. Uh, the evidence. There's something that's between the boys and the girls' locker room, yeah. Sucker's account? What? Shoot! That is one, though! Okay, maybe it was the posters instead. Okay, never mind. Uh, the posters. I got yeah, okay. Maybe the Sakura comes that later. She killed somewhere else is the poster that's hanging in each locker room. Your proof is some posters? The poster in the girls' locker room was a picture of a big boobed supermodel. But don't you think that's kind of strange? Why would the girls' locker room have a poster like that? I bet those massive jugs of hers were totally fake! <laughs> Meanwhile, the boys' locker room had a poster of the super popular boy band Tornado. Again, that doesn't really seem to belong in a boys' locker room. So you're saying that maybe the posters were switched? And there's one other thing I noticed about the locker rooms. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, right, here we go. You're referring to my protein coffee, aren't you? Protein coffee? While I was in the girls' locker room earlier, I spilled some protein coffee on the carpet. But I noticed that after the murder, the stain had been totally scrubbed away. No, it's not that the stain was scrubbed away. It was moved. Let's see, where's that one at? There it is. I got it! You got it! The stain on the girls' locker room carpet wasn't scrubbed away. In fact, I found it on the boys' locker room carpet. That's definitely the stain from my protein coffee. Then, does that mean that the carpets were switched too? But why would anyone do that? To move the murder scene from one locker room to the other. It's certainly plausible, don't you think? What? In other words, in order to completely swap the scene of the crime, the bloodstained poster and carpet were moved along with the dead body. By doing this, the killer was able to change the entire room where the murder took place. I can certainly follow your reasoning, but why would the culprit bother doing that? Yeah, why? Huh? Why would they go to all that trouble of switching the scene of the crime? Actually, an even bigger question. If the murder did take place in the boys' locker room, then how did Chihiro get in the boys' locker room in the first place? <gasps> to get into the locker rooms, you have to swipe your e-handbook across the card reader device. But Chihiro's handbook should have only allowed her access to the girls' locker room. 
She had no way to get into the boys' locker room to begin with. No, she did have a way, and I can tell you what it was. I highly doubt that. Yeah, I do too. Shut up! I'm telling you, I know how she could have done it. Is he right? Kachero, I really have gotten to the boys' locker room somehow. Spinning, spinning. Broken e handbook, okay. Is it really possible? Could Chihiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? Ah! I've got it! She must have hacked her e-handbook! Right? No! No! Okay, okay, okay. Okay, yeah, I need to remember to listen to all of them first. Okay. Is it oh. really possible? Could Chihiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? Ah! I've got it! She must have hacked her e-handbook! She was the ultimate programmer, after all. I'm sure that would have been no problem for her. No, I don't think that's it. She used the thing that was in the main hall. Huh? What thing? I'm talking about Leon's hair. Oh, it's broken. Yeah, okay, okay. I need to no. wait till, like, I listen to all of it first before I start shooting. No. I don't think Chihiro used Leon's handbook. Why not? Because Leon's handbook was broken. Oh. Well, then, yeah, I guess that'd be pretty impossible, huh? I am struck silent by how quickly you gave up. Plus, isn't there a regulation against using someone else's handbook? Actually, the rule states that loaning your handbook is prohibited. It says nothing about borrowing one. In other words, you could borrow a dead person's handbook all you want, and you'd be safe. Yep, yep, yep. Hit the nail square on the noggin! Of course, if it were broken, that wouldn't make any sense anyway. So then, she must have hacked hers like I said. She used her ultimate programmer skills and... Psst! You can't fix an e-handbook! The instant you open one up, a security buzzer starts blaring! So, if she didn't use Leon's handbook, and she didn't modify her own handbook... Maybe Mr. Nayagi's initial assumption is just... wrong? It seems like there's no way she could have got into the boys' locker room. So I guess so. Okay then, I vote for Byakuya! Is that the... is that it then? Chihiro was killed in the girls' locker room, and Byakuya was the only one who did it? Really? But still, I don't know what else I can do. Hold on a second. I agree with you, though. I think you're on the right track. What the? You finally decide to open your mouth and that's what you've got to say? There's no way she could get in the boys' locker room, right? So... Why are you so sure she couldn't get in? There's still one other way she could have gained access. What? What are you talking about? What other way is there? Well, to explain that, why don't we take a little break from the trial? I'd like you all to come see something. Wait, 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 wait. Just what do you think you're doing? Don't worry. This will make the whole trial more exciting. I'm sure that thought must please you. Huh? It'll make things more exciting? Well, all right then. I declare an official class trial recess. <gasps> A recess? For real? Now then, what is it you want to show us? It better not be boring or I'll be very unhappy. Oh. I have no doubt it'll meet your lofty expectations. So, shall we go? Shall we go? Okay, thank you for teleporting me. <laughs> so before I even knew what was happening, the class trial had been put on hold. We hit it off with Kyoko in lead, and what she took us was... Chiro's body? Yeah. The girl's locker room? We've already searched this place top to bottom! What are you trying to pull, Missy? I'd like you to examine the victim's body one more time. You want to check it again? Be sure to examine the entire body very carefully. Take your time. Examine her carefully? Like Bro. using our hands? For someone who says he likes 2D, you're not giving that. No way, no way, no way, no way, no way! It's probably best if I don't run my hands all over a girl's dead body. It's not that I'm creeped out or anything, it's just... Based on religious grounds, you know? Very well. I'll do it. But, but you're a girl. You shouldn't have to touch a dead body. Just let one of the boys do it. No, it's okay. I think Chihiro would rather have a girl examine her. So just leave this to me. S Sakura. 
What is this? Some kind of secret girl on girl action? Is that what you two are about? That's not it at all. Stop screwing around. Okay, here I go. I'm sorry, Chihiro. Please excuse the intrusion. Putting her hands together in a brief prayer, Sakura then begins to quietly examine her body. Be sure to check her entire body, and I believe we will solve this particular mystery. Her entire body? I know you say that, but... What? This is... What is this... Girl, what the heck? What is it? Not possible. It's not possible. Why are you so angry? Sakura's eyes were staring wildly at Chihiro's lifeless form. Her massive frame trembled. This... this girl is... Is what? Is a boy! <laughs> Ow! Ah, I see. So, <laughs> she was actually a he. So that's how... Okay, so Chihiro got into the room with you their own handbook. What? You're joking, right? I wouldn't joke about this. Then, then it's really true? Chihiro was a guy? Hmm? Oh, what? You guys didn't <laughs> Bro, know? Bro, you didn't Heck, know? I knew that right off the bat. Oh, my God. Chihiro Fujisaki was totally a guy. Then, he was a cross-dresser? Oh, no, I'm really on fire. Oh, my God. I wish I had killed him. So that's what Kyoko wanted to show everyone, huh? Interesting. <laughs> yes, that certainly does make things much more Gives exciting. Gives us a lot of clues. Now let's ride this wave of excitement back to the courtroom and... Oh, I skipped it by accident. Back to the trial. Ahem. I do apologize for keeping you waiting. Uh -huh. Now then, let's resume the class trial. Okay. We've all just learned of the shocking revelation that Chihiro was actually a boy. Let's pick up from there. Yes, well... I don't know his reason for hiding it, but the fact is, Chihiro was not a girl, but a boy. To think that Chihiro was actually a guy. The thought had never even crossed my mind. And because the victim was male, he would have had no problem gaining access mm -hmm. to the boy's locker room. Assuming his handbook did, in fact, list his gender as male, then yes, that would be true. Of course his handbook said he was a boy. He dressed like a girl, but he was a boy through and through. So then, there should be no issue with Makoto's initial assertion. The victim was killed in the boys' locker room, and was then later moved to the girls' locker room. And the killer could have easily used Sayaka or Junko's handbook to get into the girls' locker room. So Chihiro really was killed in the boys' locker room? I still don't understand the motive for moving the body, but... Yes, that does seem plausible. Well... I must admit, I did find it rather odd. Okay, see, so he didn't know. I knew he felt a little... off. There was a certain incongruity to his female body. This is the most titillating situation! So now everything has been connected. All the mysteries have finally become clear. Okay, well, connected or clear or whatever, we still think you're the killer, remember? <laughs> Very interesting. This has become very interesting indeed. Ah, he's off in his own little world. What about you, Makoto? After everything we've learned, do you still think Byakuya is the killer? Well, without a doubt, Byakuya is the one that made Chihiro's death look like Genocide Jack did it. But... But I... I think he might not actually be the killer after all. What? But aren't you the one who accused him in the first place? He just seems to be too... easygoing about all this. Like he's enjoying us solving the mystery. The way he's acting, it makes it seem like it doesn't have anything to do with him. And you think that might be because it doesn't have anything to do with him? Plus, the evidence he left behind was a little too... how can I put it? Overt. He consciously chose to use the extension cord, knowing it could connect him to the murder. At least, that's how I see it. And Byakuya, when you found out the murder took place in the boys' locker room, it seemed to rattle you. And then again, when you found out Chihiro was actually a guy, if you really were the killer, that stuff wouldn't have had any effect on you. So that's your thinking, huh? Well, it bothers me that you don't have more concrete reasons, but it's fine. 
I guess I'll mark it as correct for the time being. Mark it as correct? He's right. I am not the culprit. Yeah, I kind of figured. I just happened to come across the corpse in the girl's locker room. Why are you in the girl's locker room? to alter it. Are you fucking with us right now? No, I am not effing with you right now. I'm telling you the truth. Well, I find it very hard to believe. Go ahead. Find it very hard to believe. You're free to be executed along with the rest of us. If you're really telling the truth, then why? Why do you do that to his body? My reasons hardly matter right now. Uncovering the culprit is much more important, wouldn't you say? Now then, if it wasn't me, who was it? Well, I don't think I can say for sure without talking about it a little more. We're seriously gonna keep going? We're all good, aren't we? I thought it was clear Byakuya did it. No, I'm with Makoto. If there's any doubt whatsoever, we need to explore every possibility. Because if we're wrong, we all die here. That's true. Very well then. I'm with you too. Damn straight. Count me in. Do you not have a mind of your own? Of course I do. What am I, an ant or something? Anyway, let's discuss this all as a group one more time. We still have time to make our decision. That's very true. Our lives are all on the line. Excellent. Then shall we resume our game of hide and seek? But if Byakuya didn't do it, then who's the real killer? Who murdered Chihiro? There's one thing we can be sure about that we know about the killer. The killer was able to gain access to the real murderer scene, which means there was a guy. I got it! Since the crime scene was the boys' locker room, you would need a boys' handbook to get in. Since Leon's handbook is apparently broken, the killer would have used it would have had to use their own. In other words, it had to be in a guy. That's still not enough. I need to find some more clues. Spinny spin. Celeste account about the where oh about the warehouse. Okay. Isn't there a single clue that might lead us to who did it? Well, clues are one thing. But did nobody get a look at the killer? I'm sure if someone saw the killer, they would have said something by now. Perhaps someone saw the victim at some point. Even that might be enough for now. Yeah. All we need right now is any kind of new info. New info? Celeste? That's new info! What do you mean? Oh my god, shut up, Allie. I don't like you. I don't like Allie. I lost Isn't the heart. there a single oh. clue that might lead us to who did it? Well, clues are one thing, but did nobody get a look at the killer? I'm sure if someone saw the killer, they would have said something by now. Let's go. Come on. Perhaps someone saw the victim at some point. Even that might be enough for now. Yeah. All we need right now is any kind of new info. It's over. It's all over. You want to know who saw the victim? The killer. No, it was okay. That one's Celeste. Yeah, Celeste saw Chihiro in the warehouse. I need to really just read the whole thing. I believe someone else did see the victim before he was murdered. What do you think, Celeste? Now that you mention it, yes, I did see him. Uh, really? Oh, but I suppose only Makoto knows about Makoto. this. Makoto. The rest of you had no idea, did you? That is why you're all making such ugly noises. Whatever! Just hurry up and tell us! It was last night, right before nighttime. I saw Chihiro in the dormitory warehouse. I saw him stuffing a track jacket into a duffel bag. And then, I assume, he headed off to exercise. A track jacket and a duffel bag? But we didn't find anything like that at the murder scene. It seems likely that the culprit destroyed them to get rid of any evidence. And that is when he said something that struck me as rather odd. Well, I better get going. I'm kind of in a hurry. Chihiro told me he was in a hurry. So, he must have been waiting on another guy. But why would he be in a hurry? Only if someone were mm -hmm. waiting for him, I should think. So, Mr. Fujisaki was on his way to meet with someone, and then they were going to work out together? But Hina and I had invited him to exercise with us plenty of times, and he always declined. Probably because he was afraid you'd find out the secret he was mm -hmm. hiding, right? 
Which means that conversely, he must have trusted whoever he was meeting with very enough oh. so that he was willing to risk his secret being revealed. Oh, what a marvelous friendship! The point is, whoever he met up with is the culprit, right? So we just gotta figure out who it was. But knowing what we know, I can't even guess. No, you already have what you need to make the connection. Huh? You know who the killer is. Seriously? I don't know who the killer is, Kyoko. Who, who is it? Who's the killer? Think back to the track jacket and duffel bag the killer disposed of. Focus on the details of these items, and it should become obvious who was waiting for him. Are you sure about that? You okay. really think we can figure out who did it based on two pieces of evidence that we don't have? The track jacket's blue, the duffel bag's gray. What? You want to track down some fingerprints or something? Even if we had the equipment for that, we wouldn't know how to use it. As was noted, the evidence is already gone. There's nothing to get fingerprints from. Maybe, but we can make certain inferences if we just take the time to talk it out. Easy for you to say, but fine. Celeste, did you notice anything special about the bag or jacket? The bag was... Just a normal duffel bag from the warehouse. All the bags in there are the same, so I can't imagine what would make that one special. Well, if I remember right, there was ah. a decent variety of tracksuits to choose okay, from. Okay, so that means that the color blue is is a big clue. Do you think there might be some connection between the culprit and Shihiro's jacket? Perhaps. Let's explore that and talk a bit more about the jacket he took. Does Shihiro's jacket really hold some clue about the killer? Okay, whoever knows the color has to be the killer then. Because it's only like it's only Celeste and Makoto who know about it. If she told him, maybe it's just First Celeste. Of all, we know where Chihiro was headed. He was on his way to go exercise. Yeah. So next we have to ask, why did he choose the specific tracksuit that he did? What do you mean the specific tracksuit? I got it! He picked that tracksuit because it matched the one the culprit was wearing! So, what you're saying is, the killer was wearing <gasps> the same blue tracksuit as him? It's Mondo! No, that's wrong! He knew it was blue! Oh no! Oh no! Hold on a second, Mondo. What did you just say? Oh no, I like Mondo! <laughs> what I say? He knew it was blue. When Celeste testified a few minutes ago, she said... I don't want to read this anymore. I saw him stuffing a track jacket into a duffel bag, and then I assume he headed off to exercise. Yeah, he wouldn't have known. She never said anything about the jacket's color. So why did you say Chihiro's blue tracksuit? What are you... You just... Hey, Celeste, what color was Chihiro's tracksuit? As a matter of fact, it was no. Blue. No. And before we began the trial, did you tell anyone that? The only one I told about any of this was you. Then, Mondo, how did you know what color Shihiro's tracksuit was? Because I, I just, I'm sure he saw the clothes at some point in the investigation. No, that can't be it. The bag and clothes were surely disposed of by the time we began our investigation. Then the only reason he could have known what color the tracksuit was is if he saw Cherry with it before he Cherry. died. That's the only possibility. Cherry? Are... Are you talking about your hero? So, how about it? Did you see the tracksuit or didn't you? Just by chance. I just happened to see it last night. He walked past me, and he was carrying the tracksuit in his hands. No, that can't be it either. According to Celeste's testimony... It was in a duffel bag. Yep, she stuffed the jacket into her bag in a hurry. It was almost like she was trying to hide it. And just like that, she was gone. When Celeste noticed it, Chihiro made a point of making sure the jacket was completely in the back. If you just ran into him briefly, you couldn't possibly have seen what color the tracksuit was. Yeah. Yeah. It would appear you dug your own grave. Perhaps. But you handed him the shovel, didn't you? That's why you said what you did. Focus on the tracksuit and it'll be obvious who he met with? What a bunch of nonsense. Ah, now I understand. 
It was all one big bluff, wasn't it? Your true intention was to draw a slip of the tongue from the culprit. Oh. That's why you said you knew who did it. To put them on edge. That's right. However, Mondo was my target all along. I had my suspicions about him from the very beginning. Girl, how you know that? But why? What made you so suspicious? That's a good question. There was a certain turning point that tipped was that me it? off. Maybe you didn't notice it, Mondo, but you tend <gasps> to refer to men and women differently. Oh, didn't he say dude at one point? You only call guys oh. dude. For girls, it's chick. No! And after he was killed, you happened to refer to him as dude. Oh, I remember that Once last I picked episode. Up on that, it occurred to me that Mondo knew something we didn't. No. Did you notice such a tiny detail? Are you a witch? She's a you're positively frightful! No, I'm not the frightful one. Not nearly as frightful as someone capable of murdering a friend. Duh. Mondo, was it really you? Did you really kill Chihiro? I... 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 I, I didn't kill anyone! You've been all over me, judging everything I say, putting words in my mouth. What gives you the right to treat me like a goddamn criminal? Bro, you getting so angry? Yeah! He would never do something like that! This is a false accusation! It's true. My reasoning on that is pretty shaky. That was fast. Well, this does present us with a problem. It seems we are all out of leads. <laughs> my time has nearly come. That's what my little ghost friend is telling me. Ghost friend? Oh yeah, that reminds me. Kifumi, weren't you telling me you'd found some evidence? Really? What kind of evidence? Actually, you know, now that I'm thinking about it here calmly, it might not be all that relevant. Jeez, does your confidence just get up and walk away? It's fine, man. Just tell us. If you really insist, then, um, here it is. Hmm? What do you have there? What, the, what is that? It happens to be an oh. e handbook. I found it laying on the ground, so I scooped it up. You found it on the ground, right? Then it must belong to Chihiro. Chihiro. I got it. We know Chihiro's handbook was missing from the scene of the crime, right? For a fact. For a fact indeed. I was totally sure I'd found it. Then it must hold some clue about the culprit, right? Well, that's what I was hoping. But it's busted. It won't even turn on. I imagine the culprit broke it to get rid of any evidence after the murder. That's odd. I didn't think yeah. the handbooks were quite so fragile. You're right. They're yeah, not. Yeah, you said that the other day. They're totally waterproof and shock resistant. How do you break one? It would take an awful lot to break one. And yet, this one does appear to be broken. As is Leon's, sitting useless in the main hall. For all your confidence, that is a remarkably high failure rate. <laughs> Do you think there might be some kind of mystery in there somewhere? I'm sure. How precisely did the handbooks get broken? I don't know. You can't do that. You can't do that. Weak point. What is the weak point? You already told us before that the handbook oh, has yeah. one weak point, didn't you? Oh, I don't remember that, but yeah. <laughs> you remember I don't that? remember that. <laughs> uh, sure, maybe I let that slip. But I never told anyone what the weak point actually was. But if the handbook is supposed to never break, and two of them broke in quick succession, then... Then we can only assume that someone's figured out its weakness. You know what the weakness is, right, Monokuma? So, what is it? You're asking me? I think it's a necessary piece of information if you want this to be a fair trial. But... If I tell you, and someone else decides to copy it, that would be very not good. Just tell us already! Why would we want to break our own handbooks? <sighs> oh well, I have a weakness for pushy demands. But you're sure you won't follow their example? Then allow me to make a special announcement. The weak point of my cutting-edge e-handbook is... When it's exposed to high temperatures for too long, it will suffer a meltdown and totally break! No, that means the sauna broke it! I flippin' knew it! 
You knew it? Yeah, because I found the handbook laying on the floor of the sauna. No! The temperature in the sauna can reach over 200 degrees. Strange how you don't get burnt, huh? It's because as your sweat evaporates, it creates a cooling layer of air around your skin. Is that okay? If the hot air of the sauna were somehow pushed directly onto your skin, you'd definitely get fried. That layer of air would get blown away. That's why you may feel a burning when you move around. So when you're in a sauna, make sure to keep nice and still. Wow, interesting. I learned one new fact today. That is a mere trifling speck of knowledge. Anyway, if you found the victim's handbook in the sauna... Could it be Mono's? Mondo's handbook, then? Then the killer must have been purposely trying to raise its temperature in order to break it. Meaning the culprit somehow knew its weakness. But how'd they find out? Monokuma said he didn't tell anyone, right? Indeed. Quite the He mystery. probably broke his own handbook then, and then took it into the sauna. And what if they found out by accident? Yeah, because he wore all his clothes in the sauna. What do you mean, by accident? What if the killer took their own handbook into the sauna, not knowing its weakness, Okay, so it broke? Mondo probably took Leon's handbook, and switched his handbook for a Leon's, and then he took Chihiro's in there to try to break They'd it. They realized it was broken, of course. And it wouldn't be hard to figure out why. And once they had Chihiro's handbook, they knew they had an easy way to dispose of it. I won't say it's not possible, but who would have done something like that? I don't know of anyone who took their handbook into the sauna. I might know someone who did. Whoa! Seriously? I think the one who may have taken their handbook into the sauna was... Oh. <laughs> Takano's. Oh... <laughs> Mondo! No, I liked him. Here's my answer. Mondo, your handbook got broken in the sauna, didn't it? What? Why? Why do you keep accusing Bro, me? Bro, you know. Mondo and Taka had an endurance contest in the sauna not too long ago. Don't act like Remember? you don't know. Yeah, I know. And for the contest, Mondo just so happened to keep his school uniform on. But little did he realize... He'd also left his handbook in one of his uniform pockets. And when it was all over, Mondo discovered that taking your handbook into the sauna could easily destroy mm -hmm. it. Uh, no, wait, hold on. You've got yeah. it all wrong. He would never kill. I don't accept this. Show me the proof. The actual solid proof. I mean, I don't want to believe it either, but, but I found something that proves this beyond a shadow of a doubt. Spin that around, yeah. Spin it, spin it, spin it. Uh, argument. I don't know which one's which. Let's test hit Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine. Oh, oh, that was it. Broken, See? broken, Look. broken, broken. Makoto was wrong after all. Mondo wouldn't hurt a fly. Okay, okay, I got it, I got it. Yeah, broke in the sauna. Okay, come on, Makoto, spin it around. Let's test Makoto's assertion. Yeah, yeah. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. In other mm -hmm. words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine. It's that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not your handbook. Mondo, the handbook you have right now. Is it really yours? What the fuck is that supposed to mean? The broken handbook that was in the main hall. Isn't that one actually yours? What the heck are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, he has Leon's. What I mean is, I think Mondo swapped his handbook out for one that actually works. I think he took Leon's handbook and replaced it with his own. After all, Monokuma said himself that Leon's handbook never should have broken. That's right! The punishment it suffered wasn't nearly enough to destroy it. I mean, I don't know about that. There's like tons of baseballs. So then, the broken handbook in the main hall is actually Mondo's, which would mean 
that the handbook Mondo has right now is actually Leon's, yes? But doesn't that violate the school regulation that says loaning out your handbook is prohibited? Well, here's how I look at it. There is a rule about loaning your handbook to another student, but if they're dead, they're not a student. It's kind of a great area, I admit. But no worries. If anything, it just makes things more interesting. As such, I decree that exchanging handbooks with a corpse is not a violation of the rules. Well, Mondo, if I'm wrong about this, you're welcome to say so. I'm happy to admit I made a mistake, but... Son of a bitch. What's wrong, bro? C come on. Tell him he's wrong! You are wrong! You have to be wrong! He's the culprit. Everything you just said is wrong! You made it all up! Oh, are we gonna have to do this for Taka? Okay. The little then why don't we do, look do, back do, on do. this case one more time? The comic? But that way, everything will become clear. And we'll all see if I was right or wrong. The comic! Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> I like the comic, it's fun. Okay, I'm gonna let it replay again. Because I think I've got it right this time. Just make sure, because I think I'm missing one. Here. Uh, you put up the body. Okay, exactly yeah, or the poster happened. of the body. Okay, I think it's right now. First, let's take a look back to before the incident. Last night, Celeste saw Chihiro in the warehouse, correct? At the time, she was apparently stuffing something into a duffel bag. That something was a blue tracksuit. You can confirm this, right, Celeste? With bag in hand, Chihiro headed out, even though it was officially nighttime. She made her way to the locker room, specifically the boys' locker room. But how could the victim, who was apparently a girl, access the boys' locker room? Simple because she was really a he, which is why he was able to use his own e-handbook to gain entrance to the boys' locker room. Once inside, he met with someone there, and the person he met was the one who killed him. It seems likely that the killer grabbed the nearby dumbbell, approached the unsuspecting Chihiro, and attacked him. And that's where the blood stains on the poster and carpeting in the boys' locker room came from. It was likely in the heat of the moment. The body was arranged, but the murder itself felt unplanned. Which is why the killer hurried to try and hide the act. First, pulling up the bloodstained carpet. Then, removing the bloody poster. And finally, carrying the corpse into the girl's locker room. A girl's handbook was necessary to get into the locker room, of course. But this alone doesn't prove that the killer was necessarily a girl. After all, Sayaka and Junko's handbooks had been placed in the main hall. Using one of those, a boy could get into the girls' locker room without much problem. And that's exactly how the killer did it. With the carpet and the poster they brought with them, they got to work. They changed the layout of the boys' and girls' locker room in what you might call a crime scene switch. That could have been the end of things, but no. Yakuya discovered the body and decided to intervene in the situation, making things even more complicated. So, after stumbling on the crime scene, he went and grabbed the extension cord from the library, and then he got to work. He used the cord to string up Chihiro's lifeless body. He was so mean. Then, using the victim's like, own Like, why? Blood, he left a grisly message there at the scene of the crime. Why do you have to do that? He wanted to create the illusion that Genocide Jack was responsible for the slaughter. 
And around the same time that Byakuya was putting together this facade, the killer, having already disposed of Chihiro's bag and other belongings, arrived at the Sarn. There, they planned to destroy the last piece of evidence. Chihiro's handbook, I skipped that. <laughs> Okay, finally, I got it. And just as the killer expected, the steamy sauna was enough to ruin the electronic gadget. Somehow, the killer knew that the handbook couldn't stand up to the heat of the sauna. And the reason they knew that is because the sauna had already wrecked their own handbook. And that's how it all played out. Oh my god, he looks freaky. Isn't that right, Mondo Owada? Mondo Owada. Okay, I'm not gonna lie. I need to like take a break for a second. I gotta stand up because my butt is killing me I've been recording for nearly two hours. Okay, I had to take my sweater off because it got hot and I had to stand up because my butt was hurting Wait. No, this can't be right. Where's your evidence? Yeah, where's your evidence? You need evidence. You need proof. Without any proof, you can't pin any of this on him evidence that Mondo is the killer that already revealed itself earlier in the trial, of course! If I can somehow show where Mondo's handbook is right now, once I do that, everything will become clear. Okay, oh my god. Sure. Fever time? What? Oh, not this. Oh, God. I don't know what they just said, but you know what? It's fine. Oh, what do you want me to do here? Show me some evidence. Hold You're on. Wrong. I won't listen. I refute you. I got this. False. Show me some evidence. I won't listen. False. I got it. Boom. 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 I refuse to vote. Show me some evidence. What? You're wrong. I won't listen. I don't know what this is supposed to I mean. Repeat you. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it anymore. Show me some evidence. I just keep doing this. I won't listen. False. You're corrupt. I refuse to vote. I refute you. I did it! Show me some evidence. This should I did it! I don't know how I did it, but I did it! I did it! <laughs> I did it! I don't even know what that said. <laughs> if my thinking so far is right, Mondo must have replaced his broken handbook with Leon's. In which case, we can just check each of our handbooks right now. Once we do that, we'll- We don't gotta do that. Oh. Yeah, I did it. I killed him. Oh, he's just fessing up. Oh, and that's the trial! Oh my god. Oh my god. Dang. I got a lot of A. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. Bro. 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 What do you say? Bro. I got no choice, man. After hearing all that, I gotta just... Give up. Go ahead, Monokuma. Get it over with. But why did you kill Ask Chihiro? For the goddamn verdict. Roger that! Wait! Hold on! No waiting! No holding on! Time for the moment we've all been waiting for! Grab your lever and give it a yank! Who will you elect as the blackened this time around? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Oh, Mondo. I liked Mondo. I really liked him. He's crazy and I like that. But why? Why did he kill him? I just don't understand. I like this hair. <laughs> what? Uh-oh, this time looks like you got it right again. Yes, it's so. The black and the killed your hero was... Uh, Mondo Iwata. In case you're wondering, the vote was not unanimous. Kiyotaka chose the wrong answer. You're treading very close to a dangerous zone, Mr. Ishimaru. You need to be more careful. <laughs> I refuse to believe it. There's no way he would kill someone. Sorry. 
Why are this? you apologizing? Why, 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 why? Why? Why did you do it? Now then. Well, it looks like Mondo's taken a vow of silence, so let me explain on his behalf. Actually, the story of this murder this time is a sad story of two men. <gasps> oh, but before anyone doesn't... What? <laughs> I want to hear it. Don't break the fourth wall. Anyway, there was once a young boy, and his name was Tahiro Fujisaki. He had an extreme inferiority complex regarding his lack of strength. You're so weak, even though you're a boy. He heard things like that as long as he could remember, and he couldn't overcome his weakness. On the contrary, he tried to hide and buried himself further and further into that weakness to take on the fragile form of a petite young girl. He had chosen this way. He had chosen that as his way out. Um. Now nobody will be able to say anything about even though you're a boy, but no matter how tightly he wrapped himself in the shell, the inferiority already- can I say that word? Inferi inferior, inferiority complex had already taken a root deep inside of him. There was not so easily able to be weeded out. As it turned out, the shell was completely empty. The complex didn't disappear. Instead, it only grew stronger and stronger. <laughs> I'm weak. Weak, 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 weak. Once the killing game had started here at the school, he had no other choice but to accept his fact. After all, the world is survival of the fittest. If you're not strong, you don't survive. And when the lovely and hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets, which of course included Chihiro's embarrassing secret, which I was more than willing to divulge. Even though he dressed like a girl, Chihiro is actually a boy. Hey, um... And that was something Chihiro couldn't let anyone find out, no matter the cost. If that were revealed, it would be the end. The hardened shell would crack, the armor would fall away. Without a doubt, those around him would torture him even more than before. Everyone figured being thrust... Everyone figured being... Everyone figured being thrust into a dilemma must have sent him into a... I don't understand that word. <laughs> and yet... I'm sorry. I didn't really want to talk about it right now. But... But I also don't want to leave things the way they are, so maybe I can talk about it later. After I try my best to become strong, then I can tell everyone. Annoyingly, he used the threat of discovery to motivate himself to become stronger. That's right. Now's my chance. I want to change. I'm gonna get stronger and accept who I am. Strong enough so that when someone says, even though you're a boy, I'll be okay. I'll get better. With that thought at the front of his mind, he resolved to take immediate action. And so... That day, he made his commitment to begin exercising. He was prepared to retrain his money and body and... What? Body and mind. But sadly, that would be the first and only chance he would get at it. Hey! Um... When he decided to start exercising, he thought it would be good to ask for someone's help. But he wanted to tell that person his secret first, and then ask them to help him from there. And that person he went to? Yeah, that's right. It was me. <laughs> yep, it sure was! <laughs> the biker gang fella that had been painfully clear about how important his manly promises were. So Tahira probably figured that if he, if he confided in Mondo, his honor would make him keep the secret. Uh -huh. Plus, Mr. Macho Mondo was the very simple of a strong man that Chihiro had always aspired to be. Maybe talking to Mondo will help give me some courage. So, he went and asked Mondo to help him become strong. <clears throat> that was his aspiration, and he thought that with only Mondo's support, he would never be able, he would ever be able to come that close. Correct. <laughs> so then... That must be why Mondo did what he did, to keep the promise he made to Chihiro. Huh? What did he do? You mean, that's why Mondo carried Chihiro from the boys' locker room to the girls' locker room? Indeed. Yes, that's exactly what I mean. What I mean. <laughs> oh my god. Wasn't that to cover up what he'd done? Certainly. That could have been part of it, but I don't think that was the main reason. The real purpose was to keep the promise between men he'd made to Chihiro. But... But how does that... What? How does moving the body keep a secret? Because... Because if everyone knew he'd be killed in the boys' room, boys' locker room, then everyone had been arguing about how she got into the boys' locker room, right? Once that started up, at least a few of us would have immediately begun to suspect his identity, so... He tried to protect Chihiro's secret by putting him in the girls' locker room and stealing his e-hand book. See? Then, Mondo did all that to keep the promise he'd made to Chihiro, who he'd also killed? <sighs> Why? Why would he do that? I want to hear you talk more! The more I don't understand, I mean, you guys trusted each other, right? So, why did you? 
Because no matter what, I didn't want anyone to know. I knew it. So that's what triggered it, after all. The motive. The possibility of having your embarrassing memories and secrets exposed. What? What is That's this? impossible. Nothing could have been that bad. Something he didn't want anyone to know, even if it meant killing someone? You're wrong. It's impossible. Don't make me repeat How myself. How many times must I repeat myself? To judge others by your own standards is the height of folly. Even if you can't comprehend it, he obviously can. That's all there is to it. <laughs> Well, while we're on the subject, why don't I tell you? The embarrassing memory, the secret he didn't want anyone to know. Hey! You know um... that what Mondo did? He killed his own brother. <laughs> Mondo, the ultimate biker gang leader, makes all the hoodlums and riffrats across the country tremble. But the only reason he, was, he had a chance to join a gang in the first place was because of a certain someone. <laughs> Mondo's other brother's name was Daya Owada. Mondo had nothing but respect for him. It was because of Daya that Mondo ever got on a motorcycle. Mondo's brother was his only family growing up. He was the only one Mondo could trust or respect. He wanted to measure up to his big brother, so he imitated him in everything that he did. Mondo was the eponym of... Ep 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 Epi ep you know what I mean. <laughs> the starry-eyed kid brother. Meanwhile, the characteristic the can I speak? The characteristic older brother had put together a local motorcycle gang, and before anyone knew it, it had grown into a big biker gang in the country. I'm gonna stop talking as Monokuma because I'm messing up. <laughs> Daya, the older brother, number one in the gang, and his number two, his younger brother Mondo. In the beginning, everything was peaches and gravy, but then when Mondo started to think about how he would someday have to take over the gang from his brother. His brother's greatness, his reputation, begin to gnaw at Mondo's every soul. Very soul. The kid's gonna take over for Daya, huh? Daya created this gang with his bare hands. Mondo's just along for the ride. Can someone like that really be our leader? And all that'll do is make the game look yeah. weak. Almost every day, Mondo heard the, gas the gossip and whispers of every other member of the gang. Which is why... I... I just... I gotta get stronger. Stronger than Daya. Once, just one time, no matter what, I gotta win. Don't fuck with me. I don't care what it takes, I gotta come out on top. And on the night of his, am his Amazing Brothers retirement ceremony, Mondo challenged him to a street race. But during that race, tragedy struck. The kid brother pushed ahead with reckless abandon. Eager for victory, I cannot read, and dashed into oncoming traffic. But suddenly... Laying in his kid brother's arms, the older brother delivered his final words. My bad, kid. I effed up. Sorry. Of course he knew it was his brother. Of course he knew it was his brother's fault, but Daya never blamed him for what happened. Hey, kid. The rest is up to you. No matter what. You gotta keep the gang together. Cause it's the team. You and me. Put together. It's a pro- a promise. Between men. <laughs> He decided to hide the truth of what happened from everyone else in the gang. In order to keep the gang together, and keep the promise to his brother, he could never admit to anyone that it was his own weakness that had caused the accident. And, as a result... The team was made even stronger under the banner of the kid who bested his big brother. Daya was gonna lose his kid brother, so he got stupid and got himself killed. That became the explanation for what happened. Mondo's lie became the truth. He wanted to lead the team so bad, he was willing to tell all kinds of lies about his brother. I... I'm I just... Strong. <clears throat> strong, 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 strong. And yet... <laughs> as soon as our killing game began, he realized, no matter how tough he pretended to be, he was just another weakling that could die in an instant. <laughs> and then the lovely, the hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets. At that point... It was clear I would have no problem shedding light on his secret. Mondo killed his older brother. I mean, technically he didn't kill him, you know. His brother kind of jumped in there to save him, but... Sure, no matter what, I couldn't let the other gang members find out. If that happened, everything would have been ruined. Everything me and my brother had worked to create would have been destroyed. His death, all the guilt I've been carrying around, it would have been for nothing. So that's why... I... That's why I... Mondo, 
After I saw what Monokuma had on me, my head filled with all kinds of fuzzy uneasiness and just started swirling around. I never felt any like anything like that before. I, I didn't know I what just... to do about it. I wasn't sure what to think or say, but after a while, the fuzzy uneasiness <laughs> turned itself into a rock-hard lump of anxiety way down in my stomach. And it was right around then that Chihiro asked me to start working out with him. And right there, I... He told me a secret. <laughs> Seriously? Jesus. Uh, I'm yeah, sorry. I'm sorry I lied to you. <laughs> but why? Why now? Why are you telling me this all of a sudden? Huh? Because, I mean, you kept the secret this whole time, right? If anyone found out, you would... But... You're right, but... I want to change. I wrapped myself in lies. I'm weak. I want to destroy that version of me forever. His words were like a knife in my gut. I felt like he was exposing the lie I'd been living myself. I have to change. I don't want to be weak anymore. You're so strong. It can't hurt you, right? Whatever secret Monokuma might tell us. You piece of... So what? You're saying I should just say it? What? You're saying if I really what? am, I should just tell everyone my secret? Huh? I was jealous. I was jealous of Chihiro's strength. He had the strength to face his own weakness, to try to overcome it. It was the kind of strength I'd never had. I was so jealous of him, and that jealousy broke me. What? Are you making fun what? of me? I'm strong. Are you effing me with, with me right no. now? I'm not making fun of you. You really are strong, Mondo. It felt like I could hear something starting to crack. Something inside my head. <laughs> what did he want me to do? What was I supposed to do? What was I supposed to just sit there and let my secret get revealed and ruin everything? What's wrong? Damn you! Why do you have to tell me all that? Why are you trying to rub my failure in my face? I, I no, just want to. I just to... really admire you. I admire your strength. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I am strong. Strong. I'm strong. Yeah. Strong, strong, strong. Yeah. Stronger than you. You son of and a stronger bitch. than Daya. <laughs> Boink. I don't remember anything after that. When I woke up again, he was laying at my feet, covered in blood. I had the dumbbell in my hand, and I was staring at, down at him on the ground. Hey. I, I killed, killed him. I killed Chihiro. Oh. Even after all this time, I'm still just as weak as I've always been. And thanks to that, I did something I can never take back. Mondo. He was normally so aggressive, so angry. He hid that weak side from everyone. That was his secret. A weakness like that lived in a heart like his, and it turned him cold-blooded. <laughs> no! Look at him, you see? You're all just like him. For a secret from the past, for a memory. For that, he killed another living human in cold blood. Hmm. He couldn't cut free of his regrets from the outside world. He doesn't know what true strength is. You see hope anywhere in there? Cause I sure don't. <laughs> Just shut up. Just shut up and go ahead and say that again, I dare you. Yep. Okay, I'll say it as many times as I want. Is that what I want to say, but... <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't do that right now. Because time for the punishment is fast approaching. Punishing? You kid me. You mean... Execution? Well now, well now, well now. That's well, what I promised well, you, now. right? The black end that disturbs the peace will be punished. Ridiculous. Hold on. Now then, I prepared a very special punishment! For Mondo Awada, the ultimate gang biker gang leader. Yeah. No, wait, wait! Let's give it everything we've got! It's punishment time! Yeah. I said wait! Sorry, man. I couldn't keep the promise we made. From one man to another. No, I liked Mondo. I don't want to see him get executed. Oh. Time for the punishment. I'm going to turn my light down a bit. Because it's very bright in my face. <laughs> oh, what are we doing? Oh, what are we doing? Oh, his hair looks so freaky! Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> Monokuma's got the same hair! Oh my god, is this like a circus? What is that? The cage of death? From Rome! Oh, they have his hands tied? Oh my god, and Monokuma got off, of course. 
Oh, how is this gonna kill someone? You're just like making him like really motion sick. Oh my god. <laughs> Monokuma getting them hips. It's a hip day. Oh, he's tired. I don't understand how that would kill someone. I mean, if you go really fast, like G-forces. And he's not on the bike anymore. What is that? They turned him into butter? <gasps> what about the pancake? Oh my god, that's so brutal. They made Mondo butter. This game is ridiculous. <laughs> Laugh at death and your soul will forever be at peace. It can't be my brother. Another murder and another execution. I want to feel again. Everyone's lives are taken so lightly here. I feel like I might be going mad. Maybe I'll just let it happen. As Taka's sad screams invaded our skulls, we were each forced to realize once again. But he, of course, had to. <laughs> what a disappointment. Is this the end of the game? Miyakiya? What is this? completely insane, you know that? A game? One of your friends is dead. Do you realize that? Naturally. Of course I do. Because this game is life or death. Hey. I don't have anything to say to you. I don't have a response except that. However. I just don't understand why. Why did you go out of your way to disguise Mondo's crime? What? Why? <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Because it made things more interesting. His voice was calm, emotionless, like the voice of death. It chilled me to the bone. <laughs> Last night, when the murder took place, I was in the library as usual. Honestly. So you ignored the nighttime rule too. <laughs> and that rule never mattered to me. I don't recall agreeing to it. There is nothing to well, be done. Well, I don't particularly care. Please continue. <laughs> Then I grew late, and I decided to return to my room, which is when I stumbled upon him. <laughs> I spotted Mondo coming out of the girls' locker room. After he'd gone, I looked inside and saw the corpse. <laughs> you mean you actually witnessed the murder? <laughs> he was such a fool. He didn't have the slightest idea that I'd seen him. Well... So, you're saying you knew the, who the culprit was from the very beginning? That's right. Indeed. But, if that had been the end of it, how boring would that have been? I mean, what a waste of time to have the answer revealed right at the beginning. <laughs> Which is why I decided to lend a little helping hand. I thought it would liven things up. You did all that? To liven things up? I see. So after hearing about Genocide Jack from Toko, you decided to use that to create the fake murder scene? But... Damn, man. If we hadn't figured out who really done it, you would have been dead too, right? <laughs> well, obviously I would have revealed the truth before it reached that point, <laughs> of course. The Akiya turned and looked me in the eye. I could feel his sharp eyes piercing into me. <laughs> Thanks to a certain remarkable someone, I never did, and I was able to perform an interesting experiment. Interesting. Once I do decide to become the Blackened, I now know who I'll have to watch out for. Me? Correct. So that was your reason. <laughs> Are you satisfied? Indeed. Yes, we're done listening to your story. Moving on. Hey. There's something I'd like to ask Monokuma. What's this? Oh, I'm up next! You. You like to perform these elaborate ex executions each time, correct? My question is, why? <laughs> Do you like them? But you know, this punishment, this despair, is not just for you. <laughs> all this punishment, all this despair is my gift to mankind itself! What? You're over-exaggerating. Yeah. I am not over-exaggerating. These punishments are meant to transform all hope to despair! Damn. What do you mean? Huh? Mean? Mean? Yeah. Mean? Me, 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 me. Good grief, I don't know why you have to pick apart every stupid little thing. <laughs> Whatever, it doesn't matter. In the end, I'm going to stand alone as the victor, and then everything will be revealed to me. Ooh, ah, the noble son exciting. of the Togami family. Truly, you understand me. But who? I think it's the start of a terrifying friendship. That's enough. Shut up. I would never stoop to a level of such childish criminal like you. Let me just say this. After I have achieved complete victory, you're up next. <laughs> you're gonna find out. I'm gonna find you and kill you. Understand? In the name of my family. For which victory is a foregone conclusion. You're getting all right. Oh, it's so cool. It's like you're the main character of a video game or something. <laughs> now a trash mob for you. <laughs> I swear, whatever it takes, I'll kill you. <laughs> temper, temper. It sounds like someone needs a nap. <laughs> Ah, 
Oh my god, Mondo! Monokuma's laughter peeled across the courtroom, and then the curtain closed on the case of Chihiro and Mondo, but I knew that wasn't the end. The killing game would still continue, because the mastermind wouldn't let it end. For those of us who were still alive, our worst fear and despair kept on multiplying. It was the kind of despair that felt like a blind puppy in hell that had more of a future than us. All of our courage, our effort, our friendship, it felt like it had amounted to nothing at all. It was the worst kind of despair. Oh! Well, anyway, like I was saying, this is a pretty good spot. Yeah, a really good spot. Is this the mastermind? Anyway, isn't it amazing how that girl went and killed someone before things even had a chance to get boring? Psych? Once things really get moving, it'll be like a roller coaster. There won't be any stopping it. Fear and despair charge forward at a speed nothing can hope to match. What is he talking about? But I must admit, I'm disappointed. I went to all the pain and effort of making you part of the group, and you couldn't play your part. You do remember you were supposed to make the first move, right? Well, no biggie. Nothing we can do about it now. So just do your best to make things more exciting from now on, okay? After all, that's what everyone wants to see. There's one thing I'd like to ask you. As long as you don't want to know my measurements, fire away! Who is it? The 16 high school student, I mean. Oh, my, my. You really took me by surprise there. I know I said you could ask anything, but... Super denied, ultra denied, demonic denied. Because you see, that's my ace in the hole. And nobody be dumb enough to reveal that, right? No matter how close they were to their friends. <laughs> Is this one of us? One of the characters, like, in the trial? Like, one of us? Chapter 2, Boy's Life of Despair. Done. <laughs> the end. Ooh. Ten remaining students. To be continued! Okay, so that is the end of today's episode. So, sadly, it looks like we have lost another student, which is Mondo. I honestly, I feel really bad about this one. This one, I don't feel any good about it. I just feel really sad because I really liked Mondo. Monokuma kind of broke him down and then killed him. But I'm really interested about what happened literally like two minutes ago with a blackened character. Which I don't know if that's a part of our group or like someone else in the school. But I am super interested to get into the next episode. So let me know what you guys thought about today's episode down below. Did you guess the killer right? Please remember to like, share, subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!